Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we'll be carrying on with our Dolphin iNav5 build. So if you missed the first introductory video, I basically went over what this series is going to involve. We unboxed the Dolphin and took a look at the parts. I also went through the parts that I've chosen for my kit build. In this video, we're going to start putting it together and basically getting all the sort of non INAV side in the plane and ready to go. So at the end of the video, we'll have our servos in place. We'll have our motor installed and our ESC all ready to wire up into INAV. So let's head over to the desk and get started. Right, so if you didn't see the first video, which if you are a beginner, I would recommend watching. So I'll put a link up in the top corner and also in the video description. This is the Atom RC Dolphin. And the reason I've chosen this is because there is absolutely stacks of room in it. So we've got plenty of room to work and also it flies very nicely. So in this video, what we're gonna do is basically get everything ready as if this was gonna be like a line of sight plane effectively. So we're not looking at the INAV stuff, we are just gonna get it set up in the basic configuration. So these bits will be glued in, we'll install our servos, and we'll get our motor installed on the back, and the ESC, which I'm going to try and get installed in the back here. All right, so as I mentioned in the first video, we are going to need a couple of things to get this installed. We're obviously going to need a screwdriver for screwing on this plate. We're going to need solder and soldering iron for connecting up the ESC to the motor and also the wires for the main power onto the ESC. We're going to need um, hot glue, which I did actually forget to mention in the first video to fix our servos in. We use hot glue because then it's actually quite easy to get out. If you use isopropyl alcohol, it will actually melt the hot glue and you can pull them out quite easily. So that's the plan is we're going to get our control surfaces set up. We're going to get the motor installed. So let's get cracking. I guess the first thing that we could start with is the ESC and the motor. Right, so the first thing that I did see was that there are little holes in the bottom here to connect the two compartments but there is like a, a very thin film of foam so let's just clear that out so we've got a nice open area it's a little bit tricky for me to actually build like this because I, <laughs> I can't actually see in the hole if I tilt it like that it's harder for you to see so I think for this whole process we're going to have to compromise but all we're doing is just clearing that hole. You can see it's nice and clear now. That's where our cables are going to run through. If we wanted to chamfer the edges off to make it easier, we can. And the same here at the back, there's a, a little film over this hole and that's where the wires will go through for the motor. Right, there we go. So our holes are now clear. We can get our wires through. So there is actually a bit of access back there. So. It shouldn't be too, too bad to get the wires through into those those positions. But let's take a look at getting the motor on. So useful tip, little, little box for all your parts, keeps everything for the project in one place. So let's grab the motor, grab the servos and the ESC. There we go, everything else can stay in the box for the time being. Right, so the motor, this has actually got plenty of cable on it. And we've got a little bag of our screws here. And what we want is our motor plate. Now, um, I mentioned in the intro that you can get like 3D printed upgrades for some of these parts. Uh, one of them, I believe, is the motor mount, but also this plate here, I'm actually thinking about potentially making a 3D printed one so I can get more air in and air out just to cool that ESC down a bit better. There's plenty of height there because it's obviously going to land on these scoops. So there's plenty of height. So I might try and do like a little duct in to scoop some air in and then an outlet at the back. But if I do, I'll, I'll put a link somewhere so that you can download it. Okay, so we have a nice simple motor plate it's not sided or anything like that and the holes actually line up perfectly with this motor now i believe this is a 16 by 16 millimeter spacing for the holes 
16 by 16. So that's the, the spacing you want for your motor. And then it will just work straight away with the uh, stock plate. All right, so let's get a couple of screws. All right, so we have two lengths of screws in our motor kit and most decent kits will. Now what I'd recommend is just, just screwing one in until you just see it come out the other side. So you can see here, it's just started to come through the other side. Then you can hold the plywood up against it and check the depth because you don't want it to go any further in. So that screw is too long. So we'll try the shorter ones. These are just gonna be M3 um, Allen bolts. So it's something that if you need a different length, they're easy enough to get hold of. But that's just through and that will just nip up nicely against our plywood. You, you can just about see there, there's bits of sort of the copper windings. You don't want the threads to be touching those at all. So for this motor and this setup, we're going to be using the smaller screws. OK, so all we need to do is connect this plate to this motor. Now, if you come from quads, you may be tempted to only use two bolts but don't put them all in i never really got the whole two bolts on a quad thing i guess it's because you're changing motors more than most people but with the fixed wing it's sort of once it's on it shouldn't really be coming off and even if you do crash you tend not to damage the motor it's only if you burn them out or you want to change them so put the four bolts in and also if this is the final time you're putting the motor on i would recommend putting a little bit of thread locker on there uh, obviously sort of aluminium safe thread locker just to make sure that this doesn't undo I'm thinking with the plywood it might actually compress enough to keep it tight but it's still worth just adding a little bit and as you can see our bolts are nowhere near the, the windings of the motor so that's all going to be absolutely fine. Right, so let's bend that cable through that, that little hole there. That's where our wire is going to go through. And now it's a case of just threading these wires through into the ESC compartment. So it's pretty tricky to show the back, but you can see at the bottom there is a hole. That's where our wires go through. So they're going to go through into here. this is really awkward to do trying to get it on camera and then what we're going to try and do is watch for the wires to come through that gap and that bit of foam is still there what we want to do is thread the wires through and what we should do is see them appear underneath that hole and this is where we're going to need our tweezers or pliers or something like that to go through grab the wires and pull them through now i am going to set this up as like a permanent or a more permanent type fixing. So I'm going to solder directly to the ESC. But what we can do is we could leave a little bit of slack on there and just poke it up through that hole. There's plenty of space on the inside. Sorry, I'm knocking the camera now. But yeah, I can't actually show you because <laughs> the nose is actually smashing into the camera, but there's plenty of room up there. So we can actually pull the cables through just a little bit to get a bit more space. Right, so let's just push the, the mounting on. There's the only thing that will sort of stop it is the bolts. So just make sure that it's aligned properly. There we go. So that's pushed in. And the next thing is going to be hard to show again, but in the back of the plywood, the, the plywood plate that we're attaching this to has got starter holes so we just need to screw the two plates together so we have two lots of sort of machine screws one really small one bigger the bigger ones look the same as on this uh, plate here we've got a small set of wood screws and a large set of wood screws and these ones here are going to be the ones to attach the motor So sorry, this is not on camera, but it's going to be very, very tricky to get it on there. I'm only going to put two of these in for the time being, just in case we need to take the motor off, but it will give us the, the lengths of, that we need for wire and all that sort of stuff. So it's absolutely fine. 
what I would recommend is before you put them in for the final time and tighten them right up, uh, put them in loose to begin with, then take them back out. And then in the holes, put a couple of drops of uh, CA. So that's a thick one, but a thinner one would be better. Just a bit of thin CA in there and that will actually give the plywood a bit more support and a bit more strength. So when you put your screw in, it will stay in there a lot longer. Okay, so we have our motor wires in and as you can see, it's pretty easy to push them back in the hole. So I'm actually gonna leave them the full length. It won't really hurt anything, but yeah, I'm just gonna leave it as is so we can poke them back in through the hole when we put our ESC in. So I'm gonna leave them there for the minute and I'm gonna start prepping the ESC. So I did go over this briefly in the unboxing video. I'm using for this build a uh, Hollybro Teco 32 45 amp ESC. Now it's higher than the recommended 30 amp, but as, as I mentioned with like quad ESCs like this, I always go bigger because they're really designed for airflow over the top of them, not for being stuck in a fixed wing. So the higher capacity will give it a bit more headroom. So to connect these up is really simple. You put one of these each from the motor onto those three pads there. Doesn't matter about the order because this is a BL Heli 32 ESC. We can actually reverse the motor direction in software. Then we have our main power pads and then we have our ground signal and telemetry pads here. The only things uh, that I'm going to watch out for on this ESC is there's two LEDs. I'm going to put them so they're facing upwards so that we can see the status of the LED if we need to. Actually, there are LEDs on both sides, so it doesn't really matter. So in which case, I'm going to put the, um, the MOSFETs facing up so they get better airflow. So there we go, this side up. First things first, I'm going to test what pads I actually need to solder going on the input. So, as I mentioned in the last video, I may not use the ground. So let's check continuity. This here is the negative pad on the main power. If this pad is connected to it, which it is, we don't actually need to connect this ground. In fact, it could possibly even create a ground loop which would make things worse. So all I'm going to connect with regard to the input is the main positive, the main negative, the PWM signal and the TX for the ESC telemetry. Again, this side is the motor, just one wire to each. Okay, so I measured the main wires in the original video and there's absolutely plenty. So I know that we can just solder those straight onto there and there'll be enough cable going into the main compartment for our flight controller when we hook that up. So that's the first stage, we'll get this soldered up. And as I also mentioned, I will be putting the capacitor on it. So with the capacitor, you have the stripe this side, which is the negative, which goes to the negative pad. And then you have the other side goes to the positive pad. And ideally you want to make the legs as short as possible. So what I'm actually going to do is spread them out slightly and I'm going to put, put them over the top and solder them to the pad like that. The reason I'm putting them on that side is because if I start soldering the main leads to this, it may want to drop the capacitor off if I solder them to this side because of the heat. So I'm going to put them so that they're, they're soldered onto the same side as the main leads. I'll also probably use like a helping hand or something to hold it all together. And maybe just try and solder it at once. So what I'm going to do actually is solder on the two smaller leads first, just to get those out of the way. Um, and then we'll come back and do the capacitor in the main lead. Then, we'll, then what we'll do is we'll cut our hole for the capacitor in here and sink it in. With regards to the capacitor, if you're not really sure about cutting into the foam, you could potentially put this on the flight controller on the ESC pads, but you'll have much, much better results if you put it on the, the uh, ESC itself. So I'm going to show you how to do it 
uh, the proper way. But if you're a little bit unsure about that, you can put it on the flight controller. But I would actually use a bigger capacitor because you've then got the uh, disturbance from the leads. So first off, I'm going to solder the wire for the telemetry. And what I will do is just enough to get it through that hole. But what I'll do is, uh, even if the wire is pre-tinned, it's worth re-tinning it with your own solder. Decent solder really does help. This stuff it actually works pretty well. It's leaded solder, it actually makes really nice solder joints. But for bigger pads, we will be adding some flux as well. So let's just heat that up, re-tin it, and I might as well do the other end while I'm here. And we'll do the same with our signal lead. Again, apologies if you can't see, this is actually pretty tricky for me to try and do on camera. Okay, so let's go. We want this to be the top, so I'm gonna poke that through here. I'm just gonna lean it up against the, the wire. Apply heat to the pad and then add a bit of solder and we want it to melt into the hole and make a nice joint. That is a little bit of a ball but it has gone down through the pad, it's a nice solid joint. So that is our TX which is for our telemetry and now we're going to add the PWM which is the signal input. So we'll do exactly the same with this pad, just be careful of these other components on there. So heat up the pad, add a bit of solder, and let it flow into the hole. We have our nice shiny solder joints, and both cables are solid. So what we need to do is make sure that our capacitor wires don't actually touch any of these solder joints. Yeah, they're nice and clear of everything now. So you can see it's not touching any of the uh, solder for those wires. The it's actually the plastic that's underneath those, um, those solder joints. So we've got no problem there. Ideally, if, if I had some, I would put some liquid electrical tape over those solder joints just to make sure that it doesn't touch. So what I will probably do is get some in and put that in there afterwards. But let's get this soldered on and we'll make sure that it's not touching with a continuity check. Obviously we want to make sure that nothing like that is touching at all. Okay, so it turns out that actually attaching <laughs> this to the helping hand is not the easiest thing in the world. These jaws are a little bit small, so they want to pop it out all the time. But let, we're here now, so let's get on. So I'm going to apply a little bit of flux. And what I'm going to do is attach the wire at the same time. I've already pre-tinned these, so we're good to go. So this is going to be a little bit awkward, but let's see what we can do. So we get a bit of solder onto the pad. And we'll do the same on this positive pad. The negative pad is always a little bit trickier. Let's get them, the wires on. And let's apply the positive. So now all I'm going to do is trim back the legs. The 
The other thing that we wanted to check was that our two solder joints here aren't touching any of the capacitor legs. So the easiest way to do that is to put the uh, probe on the cable and then we can check the legs. But that's fine. And that is also fine. So we know that there's no issues here, but yeah, I would still recommend getting some liquid electrical tape on those just to be sure. So I'm going to set that so it's pretty much vertical. And that is now ready to sort of test fit in the plane. Okay, so this is our ESC compartment here, and we want to put our ESC about there so that it's if anything slightly towards the back but you can see the actual capacitor is right on that hole so that means we could potentially just make that hole bigger <laughs> and it will slide in nicely so because that's reasonably central it's actually offset slightly to the right i'm just going to make that hole a little bit bigger keep the left in line and just come down with the right what i'm going to do is just put it in sideways so about there just put a mark where the end of the capacitor is so we can see where to cut to so it's back here and now i'm just going to cut down the foam until we get to that line sorry if you can't see We can always take more foam out, we can't really put it back so easily. And this one I'm just going to go diagonally over a little bit and then come down. Let's see, are we actually all the way through? Yep, so we're all the way through, it's right here, so that sh should pop out. So let's see if that will fit, or if that's still too small. All right, so it needs to go bigger. So yeah, it is gonna be down to that line. I just didn't wanna to cut too much away, but it actually needs to come wider as well. Okay, so that actually makes life a lot easier because getting those wires in is going to be a breeze. Our capacitor will fit in like that. And our motor wires will fit in quite nicely too. So that's working out pretty well. And the capacitor is just sticking up slightly here. So it's not really going to interfere with anything we're going to do, but it means, yeah, we're using the proper bay which gives us a bit more weight at the back which means that we can potentially use a little bit bigger battery going further forward so there we go that is our esc in there all we need to do now is solder on the motor connections so it's <laughs> that capacitor is quite useful right so like i mentioned we it doesn't matter which one goes to which one they just need to go one each and what i would actually recommend is getting yeah, something just to go underneath just to protect the foam from the solder this is where it does start getting tricky because fuselages like this aren't square so i'm going to stick the servo boxes under each side here it gives us a much steadier platform to work on right so that needs to go that way up and we're just going to be soldering one wire onto each pad so again before we do that let's tin up these pads so again let's just add a little bit of flux let's get our pads tinned
So again, these wires, you would ideally pre-tin them with your own solder. Probably better to do it before you put the motor in. This is seeming like a very amateur video, so I apologize for that. When I build stuff, I usually sort of take a lot of time. And I'm gonna aim the outer ones towards the middle slightly. That's on there, it's got a nice solid grip. The middle one can go straight. With solder, don't blow on it to cool it down quicker. What that will do is actually oxidize the joint, which you don't want. Again, this final one, aim it towards the middle slightly, just so it's going in the direction of our hole in the, the fuselage. There we go. So while not the prettiest of joints, they're on there pretty well. That one I think could do with a bit more solder. happier now okay so that is our ESC soldered up so now it's just a case of pushing the wires through this side pushing the wires through this side which we can actually grab quite easily from underneath <laughs> if they go in the hole straight and then pushing our capacitor home so there we go our ESC is in place That's where it's going to go. And the final part of this puzzle would be to put the ESC cover on, which we'll be using these little black screws here. Again, with this, if you put a bit of CA glue in these, uh, so put the screws in, take the screws back out, bit of CA glue, it will actually make the attachment stronger. So even though I'm going to probably 3D print a cover, I'm going to put the screws in just so that we can get that thread in, the, thread in the bottom plate. Okay, so there we go. Motor and ESC are on and in place. So you can see we've actually got loads of wire here for connecting to our flight controller. I will be putting it right back here. So yeah, absolutely fine. That capacitor should actually get a bit of cooling there so it's all good so next let's move on to the wings and the servos one thing i did forget about the esc is it comes with a bit of heat shrink okay i knew it was going to happen i got ahead of myself there's one thing that we forgot on this esc and that is it comes with heat shrink so this would have been so much easier to get on before putting these wires on and actually i don't know if i'm going to be able to get it on at all um without taking those wires back off but yeah this bit of heat shrink will go over the esc just to protect it okay so all i've done is put this pull the wires out as much as i could put this bit of shrink as far down as i can so the heat here doesn't affect it so now all we need to do is slide it up over the esc and we're only going to get so far because of a capacitor, but we might be able to slide it underneath slightly. There we go. So that's not too bad. Get it up there as much as we can. And then what we just... And then what we do, we take a heat gun. And try not to aim at the foam. Just aim at the sort of heat shrink. And that will get us a, a nice protective layer around the ESC. Right, so while we have this here, I'll just show you the CA. So all you need is just some regular or thin CA. And it's literally just over the holes. And what it will do is it will sink down into the holes and into the threads that have been cut 
and it just gives them a little bit of strength. It will stop them from pulling out so much. Obviously, don't put your wooden <laughs> top back on until that's dried. But next up, we're going to do the servos, so it'll give plenty of time for that to dry. Okay, so this part should be a lot simpler. We have our servos that we've bought or came with our kit. So all we need to do is, first we're going to do a test fit. So get those in the hole. You can see on these, I've actually got a angle cut there, which is actually perfect if you're using Emacs. They've got this angle here. So they slide straight in that hole. Where I've gone for a different, what we need to do is just cut that corner out just so that it fits a bit better. So again, nice, it's a bit hard for me to show, uh, but nice sharp scalpel. And we're just gonna follow the line into the corner. That actually looks pretty straight. And all we need to do is go down obviously to the, the bottom of the bay. So I'm gonna have to try and do that looking because I don't wanna go through the top side of the wing. Once we cut it, just give it a yank with our needle nose pliers <laughs> if we can grip it these are i need to get some better needle nose pliers these are not great there we go and may need a little bit of tidying up but actually that feels fine so we have this great groove here which means that if we need to we can take the control horn off without taking the servo out so our servo horn attachment needs to be opposite that, that groove. So we know that our servos are going this way around. Still quite tight in there, but I actually quite like it. So nice and tight. All right, so our servo's in, it's nice and flush. So we know that that all fits quite nicely. So the next thing to do is sort out our control linkage. Now, one thing that I did forget to mention in the sort of tools section is a servo tester. And what that will allow us to do is center the servos. So let me just plug in this. This end goes into here. So we have signal plus minus. And all I've got here is a regular Beck so that I can just power this from any battery I've got lying around. And what you'll have is a position where you can adjust it on a dial. You'll have neutral, which is centered, and then auto, which will do an auto sweep. For this, we want it neutral. So if I move this dial, nothing moves. It's now centered in the servo. So we can disconnect this for the time being. And now what we need to do is put on our horn. So in our pack, we get these long ones, that's what we want. We also want this machine screw. There are usually two wood screws, which have got the point at the end and a machine screw, which has a flat at the end. For some plastic geared servos, you may find that the small screw also has a point. Now the horn, we want it to go on as close to vertical as possible. But if it's gonna lean any direction, you want it to lean slightly forward. Basically, that will give us uh, some differential. Now, there is a, a way of setting up the servos with the rods. Um, basically, the closest to 90 degrees between this and the rod, the more even the throw is going to be. If it's slightly forwards or back, you'll get more throw in one direction. And if you have more throw in one direction, you want more up than down. That's what's known as differential, and it will actually help you a little bit in the turns. So let's get our setup sort of dummied out. I have actually got a video on setting up control surfaces in iNav, and we will probably need to adjust these slightly. The rods are actually a little bit thin, but we'll see how we go. At the moment, I'm just going to do a rough throw test. Um, we will set this up fully in INAV, but we should at least be able to get in a approximate position. The way that these work, 
on this uh, control horn here, we have different holes. On the servo, the closer to the bottom you get, the less movement it has, but the more torque it has. The closer to the top you get, the more movement it has, but the less torque it has. And on the control surface, the opposite is true. So the closer to the uh, control surface, the more throw it has, the further away, the less throw it has. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in maybe the second hole up and I'm gonna put it in the top at that end. So actually, let's go third hole up and then it will be fairly neutral. This is quite tight, but it feels like it will go in. You, you do want this to be tight. The tighter it is, the less slop you're gonna have in the linkage so um, it will all work a lot better if there's any slop you bring in um, imprecision and that sort of thing so if it is that tight to get on it will it will gradually loosen slightly as the servo works but it will be no slop in there at all so let's have a look what side i want it <laughs> i should have done that first so we'll just put our horn on the servo in the position it's going to be. We'll put that here. So when that's clamped up, it's going to be on the inside of the servo. So we need to go through that way. So it needs to be like that. So we'll push it through from this side. Get it around the corner and that is in a good position so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to slide this through i'm not going to do it up at all so i'm going to put it in the top hole to start with if we level off our surface what we ideally want is actually let's just put it in at the minute what we ideally want is 90 degrees between this and these holes. So at the moment it's coming quite a bit forward. So what I'm going to do is wind this end on. And that is actually pretty level. So if I show you here it's pretty level here we are slightly aimed towards the back so it is going to be offset but it's it's not far off of 90 degrees all right so i'm just going to put this lock nut on there just gently so i can show you some stuff with the servo tester obviously our servo should be centered still So let's plug in. So yeah, we're pretty much uh, centered. So what I wanna show you is um, the throws. So what you can see here, we're pretty neutral and it's pretty level. If I come down here you say that that throw is absolutely massive so we do not need that on our plane what i ha actually have is a throw gauge so let me set that up so we'll put it in the neutral i'll attach the throw gauge and then we can get a bit better look at what's going on here so i'm going to actually put it uh, so it lines up with that that edge here so I need to come around a little bit so if I go all the way this is up elevate actually that's down elevator or, or we are at around 27 millimeters of pro and if we go the other way we're going to be over 30 so that is the upside because the, these winglets actually tilt down. So that's giving more up than down, but the throws are huge. We don't want that much throw in our control surfaces at all. This is on the top. 
so we can't reduce any more here so what we're going to have to do is lower this end to get it closer to the servo so because we've not actually connected anything yet it's nice and easy all we need to do is pull it off rotate this one and i'm actually going to stick it in the bottom hole because we really don't need that much throw at all we only need about sort of 12 15 millimeters especially if this is your first plane um, but again the reason i'm not finalizing anything or gluing anything in is because it we when we test in inav it might be slightly different to the servo tester but this will get us an approximate so i'll come back once i've got this control horn on right so once again let's plug in our tester and set it to the neutral position so what we're looking for is to get that on the spline and we want it see this time because of the angle of this rod has changed we sort of want that around a bit more so that would be closer to 90 degrees there but you can see we'd need to lengthen this bar here so let me do that a sec and we'll be right back So now we have about 15 to maybe 18 millimeters of throw that way. And about sort of 16 millimeters throw on the down. So slightly more up and down again, which is the right way, but that is a lot better as far as throw goes. Okay, I couldn't help myself, I had to adjust it. So now down we have about 14 millimeters and up we're looking at about 16 millimeters so that is much better for our initial setup again we will be fine tuning this in INAV so just so you can see where we are I've actually got it in the bottom hole here and the top hole here so that is the least throw from the servo but most torque but also the least throw at this end and that's giving us about 15 millimeters of travel on average we'll check in INAV on manual mode before we finalize anything um, we may need to move this end up one hole, but we will check that. But for the time being, I'm just going to neutralize the servo. And we'll put the screw in this end. You can see as far as the 90 goes, it is actually sloped slightly towards the back. So it's not quite at 90 degrees, but that is giving us the differential in the correct direction. Before, when it was further forward, it was too much down compared to up. So that is the better position for it to be in. So just to finish up, we'll just pull the servo out of the wing. Disconnect this end. And we're just going to pop our little screw in the top here. So with this setup, there was no interference with this end of the servo. Sometimes the uh, rod could be touching the foam somewhere, but this is absolutely fine for the full throws. So let's just stick it back in, slide the cable in the gap, and we'll put our bolt through and we'll just nip this up on this end just enough so that it catches the locking part so it won't come off and that's that wing done for the time being we're not going to glue anything in until we've set it up in INAV um, just in case we need to adjust something but for the time being this is done all we need to do is repeat the same process on the other wing all right, so while we have this, I'm not able to focus any better than this, unfortunately, but you can see the shape of the wing here. It actually has a bit of up at the back. This is known as reflex. So what that means is we should just be able to get these nice and flush and everything will fly as it should. With some Elevon setups, you need um, to actually put reflex in to give it the nice level flight, but where it's built into the aerofoil, we shouldn't need to touch it. 
but um, as far as the servos go I'm going to just leave a base set up like this. Okay so that is both of our wings done. As you can see there is basically no slop in this linkage at all. There's a tiny bit at this end but this end hasn't been fully clamped up yet but that there's no slop here at all and once that is clamped up that will be an absolutely fantastic linkage. Again the rod is a little bit thin for my liking but the actual rest of the linkage is spot on. So that's nipped up and our wings are done. So the last thing that we're going to do today is glue on our vertical stabilizers. Now this is again a pretty simple task. First thing we need to do is cut out this uh, middle section here. So follow the line of the rest of the foam just to cut that out. If you want you can cut the big part away and then trim it afterwards, whatever you feel more comfortable with. <laughs> Again, on camera this isn't so easy. So I'm going to make an absolute mess of this. When it comes to cutting foam, a sharper blade is always handy. That's not too bad. But also, if you want to cut along something you know, defined like this, a larger blade will also help guide you. So with this one, I'm going to put that blade there and just follow the line of the rest of the foam. And there you go. Nice, cleanish cut. So the next thing that we're going to do is key this up. So I'm just going to take some sandpaper and you can see where it goes in. Basically everything below this line here is sunk down in this gap. So I'm just going to key up around here. Just a bit of sandpaper. Just to rough it up. Now we want to try and key up in here as best we can, which isn't going to be the easiest of things to do. So give them a bit of a blowout. Test fit is like that. So while these are gluing in, it's a good idea just to pin them just to stop it moving. We're actually, well, I'm going to use Yoohoo Pour on this joint, which is actually a contact adhesive. So you could put pour around it, put it into that hole, pull it out, leave it for five minutes, and then jam it back in as quick as you can. Um, and that will sort of bond pretty instantly. But I'm going to use this as a uh, long, long cure version. So both ways work well. I've not had any problem with either. I'm actually going to put that right up in here and in the bottom. And what I'm going to do is just push it in. And if you were doing the um, the contact adhesive version, you'd pull it out now. You can see it's on both surfaces here and all on the bottom. Leave it for five minutes and let it bond. But because I want to be able to sort of move it about and make sure it's in the right position, I'm going to do it as a long term. So get it in place and then just sort of pin it in place so that it doesn't move. put some through from here because it's all connected and that, that will hide the holes but yeah that's that's holding it pretty solid maybe put one more in from the underside 
Yeah, so that's in there. I'll be leaving that for 24 hours, taking the pins out and it should be fine at that point. And we'll just repeat the same with this side. There you go, you can just about see that one, one of the pins have come through here from the other side. So that's the yellow pin. So that's how I've pinned it up. Now it will just sit there for, well, 24 hours until that's dry. And then what I do to take them out is use the needle nose pliers and grab hold of the metal part. Don't pull against the ball because I've had it so many times where the balls have just popped off. So grab the metal part and pull the metal part out. Sometimes they come out really easily, but sometimes they sort of bond to the glue. So they need a little bit more of a tug. So that's now our plane complete as far as the basics go. Our motor is on, our ESC is on, and our servos are installed. The next stage is gonna be starting with the INAV side. So as soon as INAV 5.0 stable comes out, that's when I'm gonna start making those videos. Chances are by the time you've seen this video, it's already out. So videos will already be in production and we'll take it from there. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also click the subscribe button and the bell icon. And when the next video in this series comes up, you will know about it. It will also help get the video out to more people so they can learn how to do this build too. Thank you very much for watching guys. See you on the next one. Fly models like you stole them.